I am sorry. I hit the wrong button. Y'all know that song where they say, I'm a dangerous man with a little bit of money in my pocket. I'm a dangerous man with a cell phone. I sure hope y'all can see it. Come back, find me. Goodness gracious, I had a good little deal going, didn't I? I, hung, I hung myself up. All right, I'm gonna let y'all catch up. That was, that was bad. That's a new first for me right there. I hung myself up. <laughs> uh, hey, man, y'all tell me if y'all are watching again. I goofed up, man. I hit the button to, by accident, and it turned my phone off, y'all. Jimmy, Jason, Matt, that's very, very disturbing. So here I am at 6.08, and it looks like I'm starting over, but I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do it all over again, but I'm going to tell you some stuff. <clears throat> It's only 32, 33. Come on, guys, get back on there. We were up at about 90-something people before I hung myself up. Hi, David. Michael, Tom, Bob, Bill, George, Sue, Eddie, Steve, Danny, Patrick. How's it going, y'all? I won't touch my phone anymore. I made a mistake. I hung myself up. Isn't that crazy? Hey, Steph. Okay. Back to what I was talking about. The flow bench. It flows real steady. And like I said, back in the day, we someone had a flow bench that was real slow pressure, real low pressure, and they created this valve shape that looks pleasing to the eye. So therefore, it looks pretty good on the dyno. Newfangled gadgets. And hey, Jimmy, I know y'all laughing at me because I hung myself up. Let's see if I can get this to line up. Look at that. Be careful not to touch the phone. But I got that valve to almost line up with my drawing. How about that? But anyway, Bruce, Mo, Adrian. So anyway, back to my story. In reality, this added so much mass, so much weight, that the spring couldn't really control this valve to open and close it fast enough to make any power. Back in the day, 50s, 60s, 70s, maybe even longer ago, it was a really cool idea to come up with a valve shaped like this because it looked like it would flow a lot. And it probably did on some old archaic flow bench that only would show an eight inch, 10 inch depression through the port and around the valve. So when you're running the air really slow, it turns nice, it goes around nice, all these things go around nice. But if you're got that bad boy on a hurricane pace where the air is coming in so fast and the engine, the piston's going up and down so fast and the valve's coming up and down so fast that the flow bench is a tool that helps us answer a question, but it doesn't answer all the questions. So the shape and the size of the port is very, very important as well. Because on a 6,000 RPM engine, and you guys can double check me on the math, but don't stop watching to do the math, okay? But I got it figured out. I'm somewhere close. At 6,000 RPM average going down the racetrack on a Harley or some Chevrolet, Chrysler, Ford, Buick, or Jeep, maybe an Oldsmobile, 6,000 RPM average, Honda, Kawasaki, whatever. The 6,000 RPM, um, that's 6,000 revolutions a minute. Divide it by 60 seconds, so you get 100 times a second. The valve, intake valve, goes up and down half of that. So I'm going to just say off the top of my head that the intake valve goes up and down 50 times a second. Now, I can't move this valve two times a second. I can't move it 10 times a second. But this valve is going up and down so fast in one second. And it has to seal 50 times a second. That's metric too, y'all, second. That's, that right there is the same as metric. Did you know that metric people in the world use the same measurement as time as regular folks like we do in America? Yeah. A second. They use that in Australia, Germany, France. It's 50 times a second. Same measurement. I know I'm being stupid. 
but this valve has to seal on the seat of the head 50 times a second when you're averaging only 6,000 RPM. Also, all the air that comes through that cylinder head that you spent all that money and all that time and you ported the heads and you made them flow a lot and you got all the best of the best. You got the best titanium valves and you got the best cam and you got the best springs and retainers and locks. But 50 times a second, all that has to work perfectly. Now, let's turn it up and go 10,000 or 12,000 or 11,000 like a pro stocker. That number right there, that 50 number, ooh, doggy, that goes up a lot, 100 times a second. Piston goes up and down 200 times a second. 200 times a second. So ring seal, ring seal is really staggering how you keep on top of that and make it work. Hey, Jamie, so at this point right here, one thing that we've learned is these, these shapes that were derived over, t over a long time ago that were pleasing to the eye and pleasing for a low-pressure bench added so much mass that the valve spring couldn't control it. Back then, an engine that turned 5,000 RPM would win the race. They were winning races at 4,500, 5,000, 6,000 RPM, 7,000 RPM. Nowadays, I think Jamie... The cup motors they're working on over there, I see Jamie on here, they, have, they, get, they turn 9,000 all day long. I don't know what the NASCAR rev limiter is on that 750 horsepower package, but they run, they, this, this valve has to seal up 100 times a second, maybe, maybe 80 times a second, but it's really got to work good. All right, so what is, why is that important? Well, as that elevation, as that RPM elevated over time, we found out that we had to add a bunch of cam timing because the intake valve wasn't open long enough and the exhaust valve wasn't open long enough. So we just kept putting bigger and bigger cam in it. And then when we did, we asked the valve spring to do something that was totally impossible. It was a mechanical feat, a mechanical nightmare to control this valve. This valve is a two and a quarter valve. This is a stainless valve. It weighs 120 grams. This thing is heavy. It feels like, I mean, it's a clanker, man. Imagine this going up and down 80 times a second and you put a one inch lift or 700 lift and a two to one rocker arm or a one six rocker or a one seven rocker arm and you ask this to be controlled. Thank you, Jamie. Jamie said 9,700 RPM is their limit now. I guess that's a mandated set in the ECU. So all of them, that's what they do. And they try to run there. They try to hit that number at the flag stand on the ovals and uh, <laughs> They got to gear them where they dig out hard. And if everybody's horsepower limited, not horsepower limited, but everybody has close to the same power, they got to do a better job with their application of the power to the ground, just like we do in drag racing. All right, so here's an answer to this question. Build a lighter part, right? Okay, here is a titanium valve. It's very similar in shape to the stainless valve. It's flat on the face instead of dished. So it will not fold up like a lawn chair as quick, because you know how strong a triangle is, right? It's hard, it's hard to bend one of these, one of these sides. It'd be easy to f fold this up if it was a nail head. So we need some strength in there. So it's gotta be in the right place without adding a bunch of weight. One way to do it is to make the valve out of titanium. So here's a nice titanium valve. It's 2.3 inches, so it's a little bit bigger than this one, and it weighs 107 grams, okay? This, to me, this is a tank. This is only 13 grams lighter than the stainless valve, but it is stronger because of the shape of the back, and it's flat across here, so it won't fold up. An oil can is bad. It can stay sealed. The spring can control this a little bit because it's lighter, and... You, the guys that are experts that do this full full time job, they know that every gram makes a huge difference in how how much control they have. So I now we have a bigger valve yet. Here's a 2.35. This is a titanium valve with the with the back shape to it that we like that takes a ton of weight out. We have a thick margin, so we have some strength. This valve can maintain its shape better when it's going up and down 80 times a second. I can't move faster than that. But this valve seals up and opens and seals up and opens. But it's got a nice radius to keep it strong. 
it has a hard to fold up margin here and it's flat face and it only weighs 97 grams think about that y'all from this to this now the valve springs are going Ooh, thank you so much. I can hang on to this bad boy right here. It's bigger, and I can hang on to it and make it go up and down when I want it to. And this one's heavy and hard to control. So this one really doesn't seal up like you think it does at high RPM. It goes up and down so fast, and sometimes it stays on the seat. Sometimes it bounces off seat. Sometimes it oil cans and gets all out of shape. And you guys aren't old enough to remember the oil cans where we used to squish them in the middle and go doom, 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 doom. That's what some of these valves are doing at a high speed. Now, this is a 2.3. This is one we use in our B2 heads. This has got the shape we want. It's got the back cuts we want. It has a nice, thick, stiff margin. It only weighs 93 grams. So this, this hot rod is from 120 to 93 grams. So we saved a lot of weight. Now, once we get this going and we're, and we're controlling the valves, and we got this valve in control where we can open it when we want it to, we can close it when we want it to, and it will stay closed, all right? When you get there with this valve, this nail head shaped valve, what does that mean? It lasts too long, the springs last too long, the valve job lasts too long. That means we can put more camshaft to it. When I say more, we can shorten up the duration, put a bigger one in, and we can add lift. So as soon as we add more lift and as soon as we put shorter duration in it. Now, now I don't care. Even this light valve is hard to control because we're asking it to do more lift more times in a short period of time, in a shorter period of time. So that's very important. There's another piece of the puzzle that guys talk to me about is the camshaft where we talk about TDC lift. When the piston comes all the way to the top and on the compression stroke, both valves are shut. We measure TDC lift is when the valve is when the cam is on overlap and the pistons at the top TDC where are the valves on the overlap well sometimes they're open 200 thou on the intake 200 thou on the exhaust and if they are both open at TDC you want to make sure they clear in the middle right here so that's what we do hey John hey Stevie Yaska hey Yaska call me dumb dumb that's a that's a, a piece of candy on a stick in America dumb dumb bet you didn't know that so this valve, we have TDC lift, okay? That's not how, that's not the closest it gets to the piston. That's the closest they get to each other because this valve, when this one's opening, this one's closing, and when this one's, uh, let's say, here it goes, the closest spot to the piston on the intake is after top dead center, 10 or 14 degrees after top dead center. That's when this valve, the intake valve, is the closest hitting the piston, and the exhaust is before top dead center, 10 to 14. And this really depends. Some, you can check them and find out where it's the closest, but when we check piston to valve clearance, it's a different thing than TDC lift. Piston to valve clearance is when we roll the engine through after TDC on the intake and before TDC on the exhaust, that's where we measure piston to valve clearance on the exhaust and where we measure it on the intake. As the engine is rotating over and the piston's going up and down, we have the the, the uh, piston going down, the intake valve is opening, and 10 to 15, 10 to 14 after top, intake valve gets closed. And on the other side, on the exhaust stroke, the piston's coming back up, and the exhaust valve is closing. The piston catches it right before it closes, about 10 to 14 before TDC, and that's when the exhaust valve is closed. So that just clears up a few of the little ideas that we talk about there. Um, also wanted to tell you guys that some people are asking me, well, I got a lot of good. I got a lot of good questions today. People saying, "Tell me about this. Tell me about that." Tell me. The one thing that I thought was kind of funny is a couple guys suggested that um, I tell them Tech Talk Tuesday about women. Well, I've already done fifty six of these now, counting this one. And if you added them all up together, that wouldn't be enough time for me to tell you one tenth of what I don't know about that. So I'm not going to talk about that. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna move on to something. That I know a little bit more about the uh, the time. Somebody asked me um, asked me today the the RPM limits on a RPM limits between an M8 Milwaukee eight four valve and a twin cam RPM limits. Well, these guys right here, 
really helped dictate that. Piston speed. I saw the king of piston speed on here a minute ago. John, his name's spelled J-O-N. He's got the biggest engines with the biggest stroke, and he tries to turn a lot of RPM. And his piston speed goes so fast, I think a, a Harley would blow the rods out the front and the back of the engine trying to keep up with his piston speed. All right, I see Kenneth, Donald. Tell them where the piston is at max lift. It's pretty far down there. Great point, Donald. Piston ain't nowhere near the top. So when people say they got to cut their valve pockets because the cam has more lift, that's not what it is. They got to cut their pockets because of the cams open too much at TDC. That's when it only has 200 lift or 250 or 300 lift. It's not because the valve has too much lift. I'm going to draw that picture. For, that was a good point. So I'm going to move this one out of the way, Donald. And when the intake valve is at full lift, let's say 108 is the lobe center. Here's the cylinder. Here's 90, here's 180, and here's TDC. The intake valve is at full lift when the piston is past halfway down. Say 100 after top, 90 here. So the piston is here when the valve gets to full lift. That's the lobe center line. Lobe center. Say it's at 100 degrees or 110. We, all, all of us know about engines that have the intake cam on 110. That means that it's 110 from here. From here to here, it's 110 degrees after TDC when the valve is wide open. So this valve, even if you add it from a 600 lift to a 700 lift cam, it can't get to this piston at full lift. It's only during the opening and closing and near overlap. It's the only way the intake valve can get close. Anybody got any other questions before we run out of time? Hey, Arnold. Hey, Jeff. Thank you all for watching. I got a good crowd tonight. I saw some big names. Hey, John. Man, I saw Jamie and John on here, man. I don't know how you beat that. You guys must be absolutely bored stiff. Tuesday night, nothing to do. Does more piston speed make more horsepower? Probably harder on the engine. I would say that piston speed, when you get to a certain point where the ring runs out of ability to keep up with the piston. I think that's, and also the piston's trying to come off the rod at TDC on overlap. So the rod's trying to come off the crank, the wrist pin's trying to come out of the rod and the piston's trying to come off the wrist pin and the piston's trying to bang the head hard at TDC on overlap. So piston speed, when the piston's going up and down so many times in a second that the parts can only keep up at a certain number. Uh, John tells me, John's watching a CNC run. Okay, that's a good excuse for you. you. You're making money and making chips while you watch Tech Talk Tuesday, number 56. Thank you. That is very cool. All right, um, I got time for one more. Give me another one. Cam timing, big factor on nitrous applications. Great question. You spraying more in, more fuel and more... In, uh, more gas and more fuel, more fuel and more air in in the same amount of time. So you get it in there because it's coming in at high pressure and it's really cold and it's very dense. So I'm not a big fan of adding a whole bunch of cam lift or duration to the intake side, but I do think it's so hard to get the exhaust out in the same little baby pipe, little baby port, exhaust valve, and exhaust cam. I think we should open the valve sooner on a nitrous engine and maybe close the valve a little later on the exhaust side just so we have time to get it all out because if you double the horsepower of nitrous you've got double the exhaust flow and we watch people put nitrous on and they they gain 100 200 300 horsepower but they don't change anything on the engine so it's just telling you what you could gain if you were to make a few changes to suit one of the things you have to do for sure on nitrous is put a better piston better rings and um, have it to seal up good when it gets really hot because the temperature goes right up. And timing on a nitrous engine is another day. All right, we'll do it. I see my time's up. I wanted to share all this info with you guys. I'm so thankful that you, you came in here to see me and talk to me and uh, share, share a minute with me. It's fun, it's fun getting to see you guys. And I see a lot of cool names coming up. Shovelhead. All right, there's a guy on here talking about a shovelhead. Are you talking about me? I mean, I got, I don't have much hair, but I, I'm not really a show head. Anyway, I had fun with the air conditioner blowing on my head. I still get pretty warmed up. A flat face and a dish face. Yeah, I did all that. 
I did all that a little while ago. Hey, John. Hey, Chris. Look, I just want to say, come back again next Tuesday and keep sending the information, man. The information that you guys sent me today about what you want to know about, what you want to talk about was very inspiring and I'm very thankful for it. And uh, you guys keep up, keep up the good work and hang in there, you guys, because better days are coming and I want to share this with God bless. Thank you all for watching. Have a great night. Send me cards, not cards. That's so old. Send me email, george at starracing.com. You can get me on Facebook or the Star Power page, Instagram, and uh, give me suggestions, man. I want to talk to you about what you want to know about. Thank you.